Now, ESCOM has so far appointed 18 people from a list of 300 turnaround agents. This was a list submitted to the power utility by Solidarity. The relatively small number of appointees is reportedly due to the utility facing an uphill battle against political leaders over the intrusivity of skills procurement plans. Now get this, on Friday... ESCOM announced it was developing a digital crowdsourcing tool which would allow the people with the required expertise to submit their details online to help address the utility's severe skills shortage. Well, to join me now for this conversation is the Solidarity Head of Communications, Mone Malan. Mr. Malan, thank you very much for your time. I'm not sure if you picked up that, um, that slight um, laugh in my voice because here we are, ESCOM says, skills-wise, it does not have the people who can manage these power stations. You, on the other hand, submitted in excess of 400 names. Out of that 400, 300 was then um, the final figure that the power utility was to deal with then in terms of uh, bringing these people in to help out. Why have only 18 been employed? Uh, look, Cody, it's extremely frustrating at the moment. Um, we've actually been engaging with government on this matter for the past three years now. Uh, in 2019, we also submitted a list to government with over 700 names. And earlier this year, in May already, we submitted another 450 names to the government. And it actually took the threat of stage six load shedding before uh, the Minister of Public Enterprises, Praveen Gordon, finally came to us and uh, asked us for help, asked us to uh, engage with them regarding the skill shortage. We finally did that. We submitted the, uh, a list of some of the top, most knowledgeable, most skilled uh, experts within the country, uh, Within that list of 300 individuals, there were over 400 uh, accredited qualifications, over 5,500 years of experience. Monet, um, Monet yes? let me stop you there for a second, and I'm sorry to interrupt your, th your train of thought there. You're saying that it was only when stage six load shedding hit us, which was on Sunday, that you got contacted by the public... Um, what is this, the, the Minister of uh, Public Enterprises, uh, Praveen Gordon, to, to say what exactly? I, I'm just curious about when it is that you say he started taking you seriously about bringing in these skills. Sorry, you, you're muted now. Oh, I think something went wrong there. Apologies for that. We're going to try and see if we can figure out what the problem is because the picture is perfect, but the sound suddenly disappearing. All right. In the meantime, let's bring you this story. Chris Ani's uh, wife, that's uh, Dim Pohani, wants her husband's name to be left out of the ANC's factional battles. She was speaking as the race to the December elective conference heats up. Now, Dim Pohani says she also engaged with uh, a member of the so-called Chris Ani Gabal about her disapproval. She says... The use of her husband's name shows the lack of respect for his legacy. We're going to bring you that soundbite in a bit. Let's take you back uh, to Monet, who has since reconnected. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I lost you there for a bit because of sound. So I was back on this question about when it is that the public enterprises minister got in touch with you. Yes, uh, apologies for the slight technical difficulty. Um, unfortunately, this is the second time this year that South Africa has been forced into stage six load shedding. Uh, earlier it was in July, and it was only at that point that government had approached us for help in this regard. And now, again, frustratingly, uh, we've had to move towards stage six once again before government has um, seemed to take any initiative whatsoever, and that's the frustrating part, is there's no sense of urgency from government. Uh, we had to wait until stage six in July, and we have, we've had to wait until stage six again before government has attempted to find any meaningful uh, solutions to these problems. So it's just that the, the slog, the 
bureaucracy and all of the, and all of the various machinations which are clogging up the system instead of uh, providing electricity. Monet, so again I ask you this question. Out of that list then, out of that final list of 300, we have it here based on the article that appeared in the City Press yesterday that it's only 18 people who have been recruited into ESCOM to help out. Why such a small number? Well, one can only speculate at this point. Uh, the, one of the reasons that has been uh, forwarded from government is that there was a lack of inclusiveness with the process. Um, I should just mention that our list was an inclusive list. We, the only criteria that we had for our list was uh, you, know, you had to have the skills, you had to have the knowledge, and you had to be willing to assist with regard to the power crisis. And you know, that was uh, luckily something that cuts across all demographic groups in South Africa. So there's really no excuse for it from government side at this point, other than just a general lack of urgency. All right. I just want to make sure that South Africans understand exactly when you talk about an inclusive list, which seemed to be the reason why government did not act, perhaps with the necessary speed. Is it because it was concerned, whoever it was at the time that was dealing with this list, the concern was that this list was made up of mainly white people. Was that the problem? Uh, look, like I said, we can only speculate regarding uh, government's motivations for this. Um, from our perspective, we did not discriminate at all regarding uh, race, regarding gender, regarding anything like that. And really, we're at a point where we can't afford to do uh, to discriminate in that regard at all. Right now, it's just get everybody who's willing to help and who can help as quickly as possible and just let everything else, you know, put that aside for once and just get South Africa going. Because if ESCOM fails, then there really isn't much left uh, for South Africa. Out of this 300, Monet, how many are still willing to render their services? How many are saying, my hand is up, I would like to go and help? Every single one of them. Uh, these are extremely motivated people. These are people who have from the beginning said they have absolutely no bitterness. They just want to get ESCOM working. Uh, these are people who are extremely highly qualified and extremely motivated to get South Africa working again. Are you making any attempts to knock at government's door again to say, here's this list of the remainder of the 300 and whoever you pick among them, but they are ready and waiting to go and give the necessary help? Yes, we are continuously in, in engagement with government, uh, attempting to find solutions, attempting to find what are the bottlenecks in the process, what, what is preventing us from moving forward in this regard. Unfortunately, it has been extremely frustrating and uh, feedback is not forthcoming uh, you know, within a reasonable time. So when you hear ESCOM executives, for example, it was Jan Obelhosa, I think it was Friday last week at that briefing, when he made mention that ESCOM was now seriously looking for highly skilled individuals who can help with these failing power plants because it's quite clear that it's only a few people who are technically abled who can help with these uh, power plants because some of them we're told they are at 70 percent and maybe that figure now revised down from 60 to about I think 59 in terms of their lifespan so these are failing power plants when you hear them saying we are on this recruitment drive, how does that make you feel when you have forwarded a list of names? Look, the fact of the matter is we just, we just need to find solutions to these problems and we need to find them as quickly as possible. So if government also wants to, if ESCOM also wants to use uh, a recruitment drive, then that's fine. Um, you know, we, don't, we don't want to stand in the way of any other process, but as long as we can move forward as quickly as possible, because at the moment, the perception that we have is that there's a lack of will and there's a lack of um, 
you know, urgency, a lack of commitment from government to say that you know, we're putting aside all of the vested interests and we're putting aside um, you know, placating the um, interests of various groups and we're just going to move forward uh, to provide electricity and to get ESCOM stabilized as quickly as possible. So it's extremely frustrating from our, from our side, but we don't stand in the way. We don't, we don't, we're not in a position where we're going to criticize government for also uh, using their own platform. But the fact of the matter is that we just need to get moving. We just need to make sure that we have individuals with the, with the abilities to provide these uh, services as quickly as possible. And at the moment, it doesn't look as though ESCOM is sharing that sense of urgency. Monet Milan, let me thank you very much for your time. Solidarity is head of communications. All right, there, there you have it. I'm not sure what's going to solve this situation, honestly.